scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. The ability to exert sovereign control over a territory and one of it at random in no particular order is influence have taught us the power of influence that kingdom advance does not just happen through evangelism alone but through influence say influence i'm teaching you now say influence influence is very important and believers must be mentored and cultured to see the relevance of kingdom influence influence is the ability to cause men to buy into your values to buy into your ideologies to buy into your perspectives about God and life without using force or cruelty is called influence are we together now that you get to a point where you can cause a territory to value what you value to prioritize what you prioritize like Ruth told Naomi your God will be my God your people will be my people so you get to a point where you exert a level of pressure on people to bend and subscribe to your values and your ideologies but you do not use force you do not use cruelty you use something called inspiration influence thrives on inspiration the flawlessness of your results compelling people to see the excellency of modeling their lives after the results that they seek which they see in your life the church will never be able to do much if we ignore influence because you see in this world that we live in at every given point someone is influencing you and you are influencing another person are we together now yes if we ever frown at the decadence that we see in our society the decadence did not come by personal indoctrinations it came by using certain people who are called gatekeepers of certain mountains to demonstrate and market that value so strong that an entire territory within a short period of time can buy into that conviction are we together now nobody just sits down for instance and loves to be gay i'm just using as an example except that someone who is in a position that can inspire is empowered both by hell and the gatekeepers of this cosmos to market an ideology that would have been ugly if it were marketed by someone with no influence so usually the devil will find people who have um, they are inspiration worthy and then he will incorporate that flaw in their life so that they will sell that idea and we receive everything hook line and sinker because they stand in a position where they can influence our thinking the church needs to be influential remember the dream of king nebuchadnezzar that daniel interpreted daniel said i saw a stone that was not carved by human hands he was interpreting the dream of Nebuchadnezzar, the head of gold, the chest and the breastplate of silver and all of that, that were representations of many kingdoms that will come. 
and then the feet that was mixed with clay and iron a type of many systems incorporated in one and daniel said i saw a stone that was not carved by human hands it arose and crushed that kingdom then the stone became a mountain a stone became a mountain a strata of influence and then he says that a kingdom was given to the saints and that that kingdom cannot be destroyed and that kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and jesus now comes to say that kingdom is called the church he says i am the builder of it the rejected stone the chief corner stone now becomes a mountain and becomes a kingdom a collection of people and an invincible force that will crush every kingdom the bible said it the king had the dream and daniel interpreted it and it will happen in the name of jesus christ so we need influence we need a lot of it one of the other elements that we need to be able to exert dominion i'm just giving us the foundation so when we say we should walk in dominion it's not just a vague talk of authority no there are certain specifics that must be in place if the church is to dominate are we together one of it for instance is spiritual empowerment there cannot be true dominion until that individual is empowered the psalmist said i will lift up my eyes onto the hills and then he asks a question he said from whence cometh my help that means the issue of help is mandatory it's just that people outsource help from different dimensions others can outsource help from sorcery and witchcraft others can outsource help from education and um, our secular enlightenment others can outsource help from relationships and human connections and then the psalmist said for me oh, i can't speak for everybody but my help cometh from the lord the maker of the heavens and the earth are we together so it's established that nobody rises and commands dominion unassisted you must be assisted by a dimension that is beyond the three-dimensional realm so every time you see someone exerting dominion in any sphere of influence at all there is no need guessing whether that person has been assisted or not if at all you care to guess you will want to just guess the source of the assistance not that that person was assisted it is impossible to walk in dominion unassisted are we together men are helped to be great men are helped to be blessed if you ignore the spiritual assistance that we call empowerment god's token of his presence and might upon your life granting you access to possibilities that should not be affordable to you by human standards that's what it means to be empowered to be engraced with an energy with an ability that only God should have so that you command results that are not given to mere men and then the third is wealth there is no dominion without wealth it is true the wealth of the kingdom is an index that empowers the church to command dominion and when i talk of wealth i'm not talking of just cars and houses that's 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 not wealth that's just maybe a level of comfort but that, that's not what we're talking about at all we're talking of a dimension of divine supplies that can force any closed door that is shut by the economy of this world to be opened are we together now these are the forces among others there are many others that must be engaged in our lives and corporately as a body 90 percent listen please 90 percent of the pursuits of men and women on earth today is an attempt to make a meaning out of their lives to make a meaning to try to put ends together so a father is rushing to get a job 
and you ask him sir why are you so busy and he tells you look i need to get um school fees for my children i need to pay rent i need to do this and that and there's a businessman running and i mean helter skelter you wake up in the morning and you see people run from morning till night and you ask them what are you looking for and some say survival some say we're making ends meet and so on and so forth and you know there's there seems to be that contention everywhere left right and center please listen very carefully you see if you follow the way of the Lord please listen to me the Bible says there is a way that seemed right unto a man it could be a way that has been established by philosophy and the pride of men I hope you know men are arrogant it's what God has had to put up with us for many decades the the pride of men in spite of our ignorance it's amazing how arrogant men are and then at the end we have to turn back and say Lord I need you how many times have people ignored God in the Bible based on whatever they think or they thought was an advantage and they were forced to return to a point where they would call upon his name and acknowledge him so when life defines a pathway for you to follow listen carefully just because a crowd is following that pathway does not mean that way is right are you listening to me now the courage to walk with God is what many people do not have because this system wields a level of pressure on you this is how it is done this is how we make money this is how we become famous this is how we do this and you know that the holy spirit is telling you there is a way i can route your life and destiny such that you will do much in in so short a time and have the time to lift up the name of the lord and glorify him you see let me tell you something the system that was designed by satan was designed by a lot of intelligence the system was so designed that you must lose certain things when you follow it one of the things you must lose is joy one of the things you must lose is peace one of the things you must lose is god one of the things you must lose is everything god gave you so you you move and take that path and check my peace is gone where did it go to and satan says continue going and then you find out my joy is gone and then you find out my relationship with God is gone. The, 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 the progression was designed to strip you of everything divine. And to reward your giving away these valuable things, you get stipends that you call success. You call stipends the accolades of men. While they clap for you for getting A and B, you have lost the things that really matter and after decades of moving in ignorance you would turn back and find out you really didn't have anything you were better off before you started following that path are we together now our world is full of very angry people look at the young people who are angry right now they turn back and look at their lives no money no joy no peace you have children as if you should kill them are we together now because you don't know what to do with them the needs are much they bring PTA letter and you are angry you have a church you don't even know what to do it's not growing you go and copy a formula somewhere and say we must apply it this church must grow and you try it and nothing happens and you give your best and the members lash back at you and you turn and say God did you design this thing and God said I have no hand in this because Jesus said I am the way listen carefully that you shall hear a voice from behind saying this is the way walk in it 
now but the challenge is this many believers do not have the fortitude to sit down and be correctly mentored to follow the path that will lead to life and power usually usually a combination i think of operations of darkness tampered with our pride the pride of men we hate being taught we want to show we know we we feel embarrassed when we are educated because it looks like it's an insult on our pedigree are we together now so usually we like suggestions but not to be taught and say look this way you are following is wrong let me tell you this i i say this with all humility i have watched people take steps and i already knew where they were going to end it's painful when you already know where a road is going and someone is still following it I have seen people take steps and make choices that I know the end of it is going to be disaster except the mercy of God intercepts somewhere in the way they are going to fail and they are going to fail woefully now this sounds like pride you see I've been saying this thing for many years I didn't just start saying it this system will never allow you serve god it's a promise i am giving you you follow this system the world's way of doing things you will never live a meaningful life have you seen the rate at which people commit suicide someone would just hang himself and write a letter i hate life i was reading um the the online paper just today about a woman i think somewhere in nigeria who killed her husband killed the children and killed herself that's the way high blood pressure used to be sickness for old people but now you see teenagers having high blood pressure and you wonder what <laughs> excuse me what they are thinking about that's life for you and satan continues to manipulate the system to ensure number one that you never have time for god i hope you know that the number one attack of satan is your spiritual life listen to me carefully in that order when satan begins to launch an attack it doesn't matter where it comes from ultimately because if he can cut your ears away from the voice of god that's the supply of your life man shall not live by bread alone but by every word and if that word is cut away from you you have started dying even though alive every attack on your life has a way of routing to your spiritual life so the bible says we should be steadfast immovable are we together now to get to a point where you are solid that nothing will offend you that you will not find offense in god to say god i'm disappointed in you i will try another strategy i i i trusted you to do a and b in my life you have come to a point where your love for god is as solid as mount zion many people's spiritual lives have been attacked every day every time per second per second satan uses all the elements in this life poverty pain offense disappointment are we together delay all kinds of things and he keeps targeting your spiritual life and goodness is he getting at people rubbishing people so much you see everyone i'm trying to make ends meet um it's time for prayer prayer what please god is here let's 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 do this thing first and we wake up early in the morning and we sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow because that was not the formula assigned to bring us rest there remained a sabbath for the people of god but until you walk with the Holy Spirit, who is the Lord of the Sabbath, to be able to guide you and show you the systems you must access. Let me tell you, my brothers and my sisters, men can find rest in experience. Do not allow the personal frustrations that you have faced on your journey to fulfillment and relevance make you believe that God is incapacitated. No. My life and your life can never be a perfect reflection of his capability. He doesn't bend to our standards. We must subscribe to conform to God's standard. 
if you are poor today it's not a reflection of god's inability to bless if you are not influential today it's not a reflection of god's limitation are we together if you are not anointed to a notable dimension it's not a reflection of god's inability to reach you there is somewhere in that equation you either do not understand or you are engaging wrongly that's why we are here to learn to be taught to be guided to see that there is a path that truly leads to death not spiritual death physical death but there is a path that leads to life is God speaking to someone already and so I just want to press on an issue with us that I think God would have me talk to us on tonight um, so that we can have the time to serve God I title it, it's a very brief message, my cup runneth over. I want to share with you the dominion systems that God has put to help men activate the supplies of heaven. I pray, pray for me that God will grant me grace to finish on time because I really want us to pray. I want us to spend a few minutes praying. The greatest distraction I have seen in the lives of believers is this issue of our daily bread. The issue of trying to make ends meet. And the rate at which believers are being distracted by the worries and the cares, especially as regards our needs. There has to be a system to address it. If not, a time will come when on Sunday churches will be empty. A time will come when you will organize crusades and you will find people saying, look, I, I have four jobs because I'm trying to make ends meet. I, my, my child's school fees has been increased to by times five and I have to make sure ends meet. God, please wait. When I make it, I can come to you. And if you disturb me, I'll come with a seed and sow it to you. Psalm 23. Lord, may this message bless your body in the name of Jesus. This is how I read this scripture. If the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Verse 2. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures he leadeth me beside the still waters verse 3 he restored my soul he leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake uh-huh yea though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death i will fear no evil for thou art with me thy rod thy staff they comfort me five thou preparest a table just leave that verse this is what we are dealing with tonight. Thou preparest a table, not a sword. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Here is the miracle. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. May that be our testimony. In the name of Jesus Christ, the son of the living God that your cup will run over transgenerationally that you will get to a point where because of you it will be that you have brought light you have brought salvation and empowerment to your loved ones i believe that the greatest attack on the body of christ will come in the area of divine supplies supplies for kingdom advance it is no news that God wants us to be able to have the level of overflow and abundance. And this is not in some carnal, um, self-centered way. No, we are talking kingdom here. Are we together? That it is the will of God, please listen very carefully, to bring us to a point by his grace where we access the supplies of heaven that can afford us the opportunity, listen carefully, to be able to spend our lives by spending our time 
serving the Lord. Remember the teaching that I did here on time. Certain things about time that we need to learn. That all that you have in life is time. Are we together now? That means whatever you give your time to, you have invested part of your life to. Are we together now? Yes. That our lives are time dependent. And whatever you commit your time to is what you have given your life to. And so Satan, knowing the value of time, has manipulated a system that compels the average person to commit most of his time on mundane pursuits so that we do not have time left to serve the purposes of the kingdom and advance the gospel and lift the name of the Lord. So it's not the issue of poverty or prosperity or abundance or lack. It's a fight for time. Satan is targeting your time, not your pocket. He's using your pocket to target your time because he knows that if he can create a system around your life where God is not prioritized, he has captured you. The time of the average believer is spent worrying you spend thinking of needs here and there and i want to tell you categorically it is not the will of god you will never be able to serve the purposes of god that way as a man of god it's impossible to have the time to settle down and prepare a quality sermon well researched with prayer to bless people when there are all kinds of concerns where will we get the fuel for the generator where are we going to rent the keyboard many people lie as if it doesn't matter it does matter when your landlord comes knocking at your door you will be surprised to see how it will influence your prayer life are we together now that says, and have you ever been in a situation that gave you concern, you lost appetite? Has that happened to someone? That you sat down, you are not sick or you are fine, but there's a plate of food in front of you and you cannot eat because you are worrying. You wake up in the night and you are stressed out. Are you not seeing that death is killing us? Give us Psalm 112. This is God's idea of a man of a family that is a true representation of his of his abundance and his supplies it says praise ye the lord blessed is the man that feareth the lord take note one that man fears the lord number two he delighted greatly in his commands so that's the secret of that man that that man is blessed go back to verse one he is blessed because he fears the Lord and he delights greatly in his commands. Verse 2 says, His seed shall be mighty upon earth. And then he says, The generation of the upright. That means that the impact of that man transcends a generation. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Verse 3 says, Wealth and riches shall be where? Please talk to me believers that wealth and riches shall be in his house and in spite of that wealth and riches his righteousness endures. Now this is what you cannot get with Satan. If you ever get wealth and riches this way your righteousness will not endure because it will force you to dapple your hands in all kinds of things that by the time you are 10 years in that voyage you have lost so many things wealth and riches shall be in his house and in spite of it his righteousness endures the bible says that man is blessed he fears the lord and he delights greatly in his commands his seed his seed there is not just his children your seed is anything that comes out of you that his seed shall be mighty upon earth and then he says the generation of the upright shall be blessed wealth and riches shall be in his house and then he says his righteousness endures forever i have taught extensively on the systems of the kingdom 
that are allocated to bring supplies and to help believers to come into a point where we experience the abundance that gives us the time and the convenience to serve God. Are we together now? Uh, I've said it again that most of the issue when it has to do with the supplies of the kingdom, wealth, riches, and abundance, is that number one, most people approach it from a carnal and ungodly perspective. It's, it's from a standpoint of lust. So the entire exegesis around the subject of wealth is coming from a heart that is already depraved. It's not a heart that truly wants to honor God. It's just a heart that wants to grab and get and so it's largely a marketing of lust but that's not the way of God number two is that there is as I will always say an imbalance in the communication of the precepts that leads to it so we have preachers who communicate their ideas on what they believe is the kingdom system allocated the economic system of the kingdom and they give the best that they can communicate and then you find out largely that from many of those teachings the members don't prosper from it it is usually the preachers that prosper from it because the members appreciate the preachers for teaching them but they go back and since they themselves don't have congregations to appreciate them there is nothing for them to return home with and they are angry and frustrated and then they now begin to write all kinds of devilish things about the gospel and about men and women of God and then we have on the other side entrepreneurs and business people and all kinds of people who bring all kinds of ideas about wealth and that is wonderful and well-meaning but some of these things are a mix of of Scientology and some of it is even a mix of all kinds of ancient religions and things that reduce God to become energy and just reduces God to become a force just like many other forces so by the time you dwell and explore those things your conclusion about God would just be that God is some kind of sovereign energy in the cosmos who can do something to your brain and so on and so forth so there is largely an imbalance my question tonight is what is truly the way to accessing the supplies of heaven is God so wicked, my brothers and my sisters, that he will leave us in the dark and watch us move in pain and in the financial squalor that continues to press people down to a point where there is not enough even for our children. It says, if you being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children. If you being evil, in the depravity of your heart, yet you can create space for compassion. To be able to look at your child and bless your child. Let me give you a guarantee. I promise you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you listen to me, you will never, never be poor. If you listen to me, you will never be small. It's a guarantee I give you in the name of the Lord. Forgive me if I sound arrogant, but it's true. Just pay attention to this thing. Don't, don't don't tamper with the equation when you don't have results get results first then you can say oh you are wrong i discovered another route this teaching is a symbol of god's mercy because there is a tsunami coming it has started it's sweeping everywhere and everything close to it and it's unfortunate that there are many believers that might be victims of this that we will never get to a point where we begin to eat our children do you know women eat their children in the bible to eat your children now doesn't mean to eat your child physically that you can mortgage the future and the destiny of your child so that you satisfy your hunger of today you have eaten your child many of our parents eat our destinies let me tell you the truth they eat our destinies in selfishness there are many people today in marriages they should not be but the parents say you must enter so that we will eat that's eating your child there are many people who should not be involved in certain things at all there are many pastors who should be in the field serving the lord 
they are somewhere roaming around forcing supplies to come from where it's not found I will never serve Satan to feed my stomach I will never serve Babylon to feed my stomach it's a vow that you must make that my entire life will be spent serving the purposes of the kingdom i will never serve the lord and quote scriptures and fall down under the anointing only to stand up and become a victim of a system that will define for me how much time and space i give god I'm not going to be talking so much about the spiritual principles we understand. I just want to pick one of the subjects that the Lord put in my heart and drum it into us and then we are going to pray. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Increase in the kingdom increase in the kingdom increase in this kingdom is a product of value write it down increase in the kingdom the greatest gift that can happen to a man is to be shown the systems and the ways that construct your life to become valuable please listen very carefully the law of value your value defines your degree of usefulness please write it down your value defines your degree of usefulness the degree to which you are needed within a civilization within a sociological context the degree of your usefulness not just your uniqueness not just your skill you can have skill that is not useful to the context of a civilization the degree of your usefulness is what we call your value and god so designed that the supplies of heaven are routed listen carefully the supplies of heaven are routed through the medium of value that when God wants a believer and one who is a citizen in the kingdom to rise to a point where you begin to access the riches and the blessings of heaven he does not just favor you as it were with giving you money but he brings you to a pedestal in life where it becomes impossible to ignore you are we together now there are many ways he achieves that but that the gateway into accessing the supplies of heaven experientially is becoming valuable now but most people most of the teachings on value does not capture the full import of what makes it rewardable it's not enough to know that your value is a measure of your usefulness just because you have something that is useful to me does not mean you will be rewarded for it there are many people carrying useful things but are not rewarded for it they are valuable yet they are not rewarded is that true so what is the system that translates your value to compel the environment that you live in to come gentiles coming to your light and then they are kings to the brightness of your rising get this tonight and you will thank me tomorrow i've taught you here that your value decides who pursues you it's true your value decides who pursues you you know you are valuable 
by the extent of demand that is placed on your grace on your skill on whatever it is that you represent now most believers will frown at what i'm saying that's why they are poor that's why they struggle we pray and that's very important we study the word we are faithful in church but we do not understand the systems allocated to bring us out of this qualo of hardship many of the things we try to address are symptoms of one central deficiency value in the area where value plays nothing will cover for it are we together now so your value is a reflection of the extent of your usefulness and i've taught you also that who pursues you determines the magnitude of your reward it is not just because people are pursuing you the quality of people pursuing you is also the quality of the reward that accrues to you if a president needs you you will be rewarded at the level and at the stature of a president is that true yes how can i call on your name and end up in shame no way no way how can i bow down before you and then bow down before a man no way no way because Ever present help in time of need. You are my God. Do you know that when you become valuable, you will command dominion in a way and manner that will not only bring God glory it will bring glory to you it will bring glory to your family you will bring beauty and glory out of your life when you become valuable pegged at a level where your usefulness cannot be ignored pegged at a level where every other factor to downplay your usefulness becomes inconsequential that you rise to a point where not gender not geographic limitations cultural barriers etc that none of these things sustain the ability to be reason enough for men to ignore you that's value value is not that you have something that is is being biased by loyalty so i have something that only my tribes people patronize and they're only doing that just because they had that my name reflects that now they, oh you are from this state and okay let's come and buy this no when you sustain an ability and you peg yourself at a pedestal in life where regardless of what else is not important in your life people ignore it because of the necessity of what you carry you are valuable it was said about jesus all men seek for you not some not yoruba people seeking for a yoruba man not Igbo people seeking for a Igbo man not northern people seeking for a northern man this is largely what we call value in our world so if i have value now i just quickly go and look for my people and say i'm the son of the soil your boy has come with this if you leave me like that and so we have a crowd of people it is it's largely just ethnocultural but that god puts something in your life my brothers and my sisters that will cause all men regardless of value nobody will ever ask you where you come from they don't care whether you are male or female nobody cares whether this water was made by a male hand or a female hand nobody cares whether once you are tested to the point of death you say let me have that water whether it was made by a child or an adult the moment people create certain factors to demean you you are not valuable enough if any other excuse is worthy enough to frustrate you then you are not valuable if you listen to what i am telling you your children will bless you tomorrow years ago the holy spirit would tell me pay attention 
and let me make you valuable. I didn't understand the extent of what he was saying. Oh, today I'm grateful. There is no magic that is going to happen in your finances. Let me repeat. There is no magic that is going to happen in your finances. If you do not trust God to take you to a point where you become extremely valuable, I give you a guarantee in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. As far as accessing supplies by yourself here on earth is concerned, you will live a frustrated life. It's a matter of time. And I'm not talking of business here or a job here. Mm -mm. Leave all those things first. You see, it is your value that gives life to those things. They don't give life to you. Many have not been taught that part of the ministry of the Holy Spirit in our lives is not just to help us know God. It's not just to help us walk in character. The Holy Ghost upgrades men. He came into our life to build us to a point where we become valuable. The Bible says Jesus increased in wisdom. Listen carefully. Jesus increased in stature. Jesus increased in favor with God and with men. The Holy Ghost does not come into the lives of people and then reduces them to a point where the only thing useful about them is their knowledge of God. No, sir. Is God speaking to us tonight? Value. When your world comes to you, they watch to see what it is that you have in your hands that you are going to exchange for the reward they have. You are valuable when no amount becomes regrettable to commit to you when no amount becomes that means nobody would drop something and turn back and say i was stupid for dropping one million i just came i know pastor alpha is anointed but ah, ah, one million what entered me no when nothing in this world becomes worthy enough to reward what you carry you are valuable with beyond imagination and this is where God is taking us to because let me tell you if you have that even if you are inside a hole I guarantee you you will not beg for bread I hope God is speaking to you you see I love you that's why I'm telling you this the devil will tell you don't mind him then make sure you don't have children make sure that you you, you are not the one who will be taking care of your relatives. Do you know how many well-meaning believers who love God are still asking God questions till today? Lord, this is unfair. My father was a pastor. My mother was a pastor. I'm a preacher. I love you with all my heart. What is all this one that I'm seeing now? 90% of the discussion in homes is money, finance. Madam, what are you bringing? You are hiding money from me. The man says you are, you are you know and all kinds of things and god is watching he's saying this time is supposed to be prayer time have you seen families doing devotion in the morning and the father stops say what, what devotion are you doing and he picks a scripture by himself just because he wants to quarrel somebody who is not bringing resources and devotion that is supposed to be a time of love and fellowship ends up becoming quarrel a lot of people accuse pastors who steal church money and you see the truth is that except God shows you the way out otherwise this thing will press you one day you will touch what you should not touch hello please talk to me don't trivialize what pressure can do in the life of a man when you are pressured to a point where you are pushed to the wall you will be surprised at the compromises you will be able to make we are losing believers per second per second because of poverty and what it can bring did you know someone sent me a text one time and told me that the, whether they wanted to give the person a job God is my witness but that the person who was helping to facilitate it said they have to pay 250,000 naira before they will get the job I said so do you have the money he said no 
she was whether i think it was a she coming to just say if i can if god can use me i said no god doesn't use me for those kind of things god does not use me for those kinds of things now it's easy to criticize them and say you mean you love god and you are doing that until you find out that a family of 10 people is depending on one person's pocket to eat is a cause it's not the will of god imagine for instance that i tell them to give me a bucket now and while i'm preaching i just i just say if the bucket comes close to you there's something written on the bucket just read it and do whatever it says look at how your mind everything i'm saying will just go down because i'm passing a bucket you look at the bucket and look at what is written on it and just shut down and say what is all this again but do you not know that it is capital intensive to lift up the name of jesus the name of jesus is heavy it takes resources to lift it up did you hear what i said the name of jesus is not a feather you throw it's heavy it will take the shoulder of priests to take it up it's easy to accuse men of god around oh i like koinonia they don't ask us to give anything we just come and enjoy we enjoy free dinner and they pay money and we, i like this kind of ministry other pastors should be like that uh -uh. don't be quick to criticize my brothers and my sisters if god does not show you the key to this gate you will stand there and almost die Nagir mama sunanka ubangi ji. We raise your banner high. We shine your light so bright. We sing in honor of you. You will never walk in integrity if you don't have supplies. I guarantee you, in the name of the Lord, you will never walk in integrity life will push you to a point where you must compromise you will preach something you didn't preach 10 years ago because you have found out that in that message now can come a way of helping your belly value now but you see the value, listen carefully, my brothers and my sisters. Just being valuable is not enough. You must ensure that that value is needed and useful within the context of your civilization. This is as simple as it is. That your value must be needed. Listen. pastor come let's assume you are selling this and i don't need it now i'm passing you have this i'm just giving an example yet i don't need it will i reward you are you valuable is your value useful to me no do i need it no so you will still suffer although you are valuable that's what is happening to many of us there is almost nobody here that i know who has not recognized something that is valuable and just because we found it we start rejoicing and we believe life should just come and bless us no sir there is a standard that demands reward because the me who is moving around me too i'm looking for something with my resources and until I find the person with that something to the standard I consider rewardable, that is the only condition for releasing things. It's not enough to be valuable. Your value must first be needed and useful. Second, your value must be translated to a form where it is served with excellence. Excellence that relates to every level of mental development. Did you hear what I just said? That your value must be translated to products and services that are served with excellence. An excellence that can be able to be satisfying to 
any kind of level that means that the value you provide and the excellence attached to it may only be able to serve people who are middle class that level of excellence may not suffice for the great who do not think price are we together now so there are many of us who are doing things but that what we are doing i give you an instance our daddy is a prof here are we together now now if you are a graduate they are not going to call you to go and head an institute of something with all kinds of benefits accruing to it because you are a graduate but not graduate enough you have not graduated enough to sit there so the problem is not that you are not a graduate but you are not graduate enough the question there is enough to the standard are we together now the person who takes last in a race I hope you know he has a time too that he finished but he did not finish at enough time to get the gold medal the question is not that they finished the question is there is a time allocated and whoever can beat the time is the one who gets the gold so it's not enough to say you are valuable as a man of god let me come back to ministry because many of you as and leave all those things let's talk ministry so let me talk ministry as a man of god it's not enough to be called You can be called. You can feel anointed. In fact, quite honestly, you can be anointed. But is it to the level that can bless the people who God told to bless you? Because for every destiny helper, there is a standard of grace that compels his resources to answer to you. God can tell me, or God would have put in my spirit to give Pastor Alpha a car provided he heals my mad child are we together provided he does what not provided he prays in my house the condition for that reward is that whoever can come with the level of grace that can take away madness in that house so i'm anointed i know scriptures and i come to the house and i roam around and i just pray and at the end of it they just thank me they put malt in a bottle with straw and they put donut and they escort me with it outside and i go it's not that god did not send them your level of value did not make it fair for that answer to come to you that means when i sit in a meeting and grace is coming on me god is lifting me to the standard that can match the helpers so that their resources can now come to me are you getting what i'm saying now listen very carefully everybody who will bless you tomorrow is already alive today your level of grace has not risen enough to call them that's why they are shifted to your tomorrow if you enter that level of grace today they will come today I look at my life today and I see what people do to me and I'm almost tempted to ask where were you where were you when I was sucking ginger inside a straw and I was a believer are we together when I was trekking to first bank without money in my account by faith hoping that I will get miracle alert now you are receiving it free it's just coming there was a price God has authorized Pastor Alpha. This is your prayer request for the next level. But your value is here. It cannot match until you are lifted to the level that matches it. And so the Holy Spirit has the responsibility of upgrading the saints. Please listen carefully. Upgrading the saints to a level where their usefulness becomes worthy of being rewarded by any standard are we together now that means pastor alpha gets to a point where someone will sit down and think with his wife and the lord will say kai build one of my servants a house why don't they think about you 
because they don't think it's fair to give you that kind of house now remember they know you are called but they think it's unfair they believe that there are more rewarding ministers in terms of impact kingdom impact and the spirit of god by himself will take their minds to those people and say that's the man you should bless please believe what i'm telling you yes we've had people my brothers and my sisters i, I say this to the glory of god we've had people live and travel from other nations and other cities to koinonia not for the program travel with seeds and they said they sat down and agreed either as a business enterprise and say no since we love god and before we started this business we agreed that god should grant us grace so that we'll bless others and they leave their cities take flights go through the rigor of coming to zaria and all they are coming to do is apostle we want to sow into koinonia and we want to continue and you ask them why and the man will say i listen to one message say value not message say value but that value had grace and content in it to rise to a level where it can smash the devil worrying that man so the man listened to a message and as he listened to the message he fell asleep and in that sleep the message continued and jesus stepped in the jesus he fasted for two months to see he didn't see but he listened to one message and climbed the ladder of a grace straight into an encounter he would look for that person and reward him that was why nicodemus looked for jesus even in the night he traced him the bible doesn't tell us everything that happened there but i'm convinced he came with honorarium It's just my thinking. It's just my simple thinking. Forgive me if I sound arrogant, but there are some of you as you are seated right now, there are all kinds of envelopes in your pocket. You are waiting for us to share the grace so you will queue and spend time only to come and sow into my life. Now, I'm sorry that I'm the one saying this and I'm not by any way manipulating you, but it's the truth. Now, you are thinking, how will somebody stand for hours just to drop a seat to a man, whereas you beg the same person while he was on the queue and he didn't give you transport fare? Are you seeing how it is? There is no reward until your value rises to a point where it can be served with excellence. As a man of God, nobody will place a demand on your grace just because you are prayerful and just because you study the truths that you communicate must the impact of that word must be felt in the lives of the people when it is done clear the way for the rewards that will come now you don't preach because of money don't get me wrong however it is important possible my brothers and my sisters to be valuable to serve that value with excellence whether you sell it or give it free you must be rewarded it's a law by the grace of god and the privilege of god's hand god has granted me the opportunity to raise too many people around this nation and around the world for me to beg for bread my children will never beg for bread even if I give bread to them and go to be with the Lord because people have been raised and wisdom is justified by her children your value has not raised anyone yet you want life to reward you you see how unfair it is just because you think you are a graduate holding a certificate does not mean that what have you given to the world that you demand value from it's amazing how your relatives will not give you money but they will run for a meeting and kneel down waiting for a man of god to pass so they will drop money you beg them for rent they didn't give you yet they are carrying four times that amount to give someone who is already blessed nobody really blesses a needy person they bless valuable people you must translate yourself from this needy mentality to a mentality of value that even if you don't have money in your pocket you can say in the name of jesus i'm coming for koinonia there is an anointing that is coming i'm not falling for nothing every time i fall i rise upgraded in the spirit and a day will come i will put something in the realm of the spirit that will cause the nations to place a demand on my grace 
Jesus climbed up the mountain and people followed him up the mountain to the point that his influence threatened the scribes and the Pharisees they said no this guy is stealing the show if we don't do something about him he will destroy us koinonia let me tell you my brothers and my sisters you are gathered here every week by the grace of God because we continue to strive to communicate truths to you that are applicable to every facet of your life it's a formula that is unbendable you would hear testimonies here you would hear testimonies every week that the word produced results nobody leaves what works did you hear what I'm saying nobody leaves what works no sir the world does not have too many things that are working so the options are few there are not too many things working in this life so when you find what works you stay and pay whatever price it takes to stay that's why the presence of God is 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 is, is a is a place and a zone you must desire and hunger for forever because you see the presence of God does not just make you heaven bound it makes you valuable it truly does look at my life the presence of God that's where you find the anointing so while I'm worshiping in his presence I love I love I love your presence I love I love you think I'm just wasting time singing but while I'm singing and worshiping in his presence there is an elevation in the spirit a new anointing son you have this anointing and that but you don't have this one let me introduce this in your life and I'm there just worshiping the same way you are typing the letter in your office me too I'm, 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 I'm doing all of that the same way you are reading for a promotion exam and all of a sudden I step out and I see a grace that was not upon me yesterday now the grace has come meaning the person who will not bless me yesterday can now bless me because there is a grace that can now add him to the list of the blessings I love I love I love your presence I love I love I love your presence. I love, I love. I love you, Jesus. I love, I love. Shalabakato Saladat. I love your presence. I love, I love. Listen. Forget about bringing a valuable person down. You don't know how needy this world is until they find true value. All this issue of trying to bring people down is a joke. When you find especially value that is stamped with the hand of God, only God can bring that person down. I'm telling you this. Koinonia will continue to grow from glory to glory it's not just some recitation the formula has been given the scroll is not closed the seals have been broken it's been open we have seen it with our eyes the things men do not have how could they resist it an anointing is not sold in the market an anointing is not stored in a bank the government does not have it so how dare you trivialize the power of God upon the hand of upon the life of a man and then assume it's not there your need will force you to remember that only the anointing can solve it listen you are seated now in this place to some of you you are attending a service I wish you could see in the realm of the spirit that you are climbing ladders some of you travel from far you just thought you came for a service until you go back on Sunday on your little prayer group and you say let us pray fire and you see fire everywhere to an extent that you say what is this what is going on here and everybody descends they will stop calling you brother immediately they, they will have to invent a name to show you you have risen in the spirit
let me tell you this it's good to know how to cook it's good to know how to do business but my brothers and my sisters be anointed this is real value be anointed have something upon you that no man can buy the same way you can do nothing against the truth but for the truth he said thou anointest my head give us that scripture you did not anoint my cup the goal is for my cup to run over but the oil came on my head and the result showed in my cup it takes more than a good profession to prosper it takes more than a good skill to prosper there is only so much reward you can get from that angle ah but when his hand comes upon you blessed is the man that my god finds and puts grace upon you your life will be a wonder you will you will walk upon gold as dust i'm telling you this listen let me tell you all these money money things you see people chase around most people don't have any money they just have enough to solve their basic needs so they look rich they are poor and yet that's what distracts a lot of people but when you stand say lord put something in my life put something upon me i i, I don't know why people don't pray that prayer oh. God shorten my journey I don't have time shorten my journey let there be an anointing on my profession listen 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 come Emeka you are a doctor come watch this we are going to pray this gentleman is a doctor when someone is sick they will meet you for injection or meet you for whatever now your profession does not determine who you bless the anointing on your profession will make a rich man come as your patient you see now that one is not mbbs again that one is the anointing influencing your possibilities so a day that no doctor is around the billionaire comes and the holy ghost not your profession pushes you there you have a restaurant you are a chef congratulations but not being anointed you will continue to cook for poor people for wherever they will finish eating and then back again and say i don't have 10 naira i don't have 15 naira but when the anointing comes upon it the anointing will make you go to visit your auntie just when a politician is there and he says i'm looking for someone there is a meeting and he says ah my daughter is here that one is no longer your skill that one is a grace from heaven that comes upon men listen you can be a preacher and have a good understanding of scripture mighty exegesis of scripture and they keep inviting you to different places wonderful you will be blessed but the eye of your helpers will never meet you until there is a grace that grace is what will take your seed your message whatever you represent to the ears of the man that can announce your ministry how would i have risen from zaria here how many public address structures do you have i'm not on facebook i'm not on any social media as a person it's not everything that is just good preaching it's not everything that is just mm -mm. there is an anointing that announces it's called an oil of gladness it can take men and make you above your fellows please listen the financial tsunami that is coming to destroy men a time will come where you will see people i'm not i'm not i'm not a, a sadist but a time will come where everything you have every other person has it you are educated they are educated and then the other person contending with you is a tribesman of the director what then is your advantage there are things when you have only the rich look for you there are things when you have only the poor look for you there are things when you have only sick people look for you 
there are things you have only those in need of legal issues look for you there are things when you have only hungry people look for you but there are things when you have all men will seek for you all men all men God designed it that way so when Jesus was about to start his ministry having done everything he did the Bible says he went to the wilderness and cried there 40 days 40 nights fasting and he returned in the power of the spirit and then Acts chapter 10 tells us how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power the Bible says he went about doing good healing all day that were oppressed something humorous happened today I I have never been to Shiloh as a person and I was just sitting today and all of a sudden I got a text the pastor in charge of registering pastors in Shiloh sent a text to my phone and said man of God are you coming we want to arrange your reservations and this I said what is this now listen I'm just saying it to encourage you I don't know that man from Adam are we together now yet there is somebody who will not stay in the secret place but will keep lobbying you will go there and be roaming around the gate like a thief they will say please join the members or sit in the overflow listen once you are struggling to be accepted in a realm and they are rejecting you it's a sign that the anointing has not opened the door go back don't force yourself just go back when you try to enter as a pastor you see other pastors and you are fighting for acceptance and they are saying mr man we invited a b not you will consider you one day stop making a mockery of yourself go back to the secret place and say where is the god that puts oil on the head of men let me tell you my brothers and my sisters when what comes upon great men comes upon you there is no door that will remain closed thou anointest my head with oil is someone ready to pray tonight this is the value that i brought for you that if you if god grants you access to the anointing and you can serve that anointing with excellence there is no door listen you don't have to leave your profession it just needs to be anointed many of us are educated but our certificates are not anointed many of us are skilled but your skill needs to be anointed i'd like you to find a corner our time is gone for the next five or ten minutes worship team just set the atmosphere for us find a place and blast in tongues and pray in the spirit and cry to god and say lord you are the giver of all good things you don't withhold good things lord put something upon my life place an anointing upon my head that will answer to the needs of kings that will answer to the needs of nobles place an anointing upon my degree place an anointing upon my masters place an anointing upon my phd oh god place an anointing upon my profession i am a lawyer but only an educated one can you put an anointing upon my legal practice your usefulness amplified by the presence of the anointing worshipers pray lord i can see i have written songs but let an anointing come upon my song so called Lord, I'm a businessman. It is true that I've paid my price. Doing well, learning the principles of business. But let an anointing come upon the value that I provide. Outside, make sure you're praying. Overflow, make sure you're praying. Now, anoint my head with oil. Shabbat 
Kokata. My business overflows. My ministry overflows. My church overflows. Thou anointed my head with oil. Favor overflows. Thou anointed my head with oil. My career explodes. Thou anointed my head with oil. Koinonia, pray. You are opening the gates of greatness. Pray. that you do whether it's your job whether it's your business and say lord let your anointing and your fire come upon it and let there be an explosion from the left to the right lift your voice and pray if you are in ministry pray over the work god has put in your hand lord it's time to take the power the glory of god to the nations it's time for the gates of ministry to be opened for the sake of the gospel as a businessman, it's time to rob minds with the great. Lift me by your anointing, O oh God. Your certificate can give you a job. It will take the anointing to rise. to pray a serious prayer lord by the anointing on my life take away poverty and hardship lift your voice and pray if there is an anointing on my life then there is a demand for it let the anointing of my life roll away financial reproach let the anointing upon my life activate divine supply by the ministry of destiny help us that it will be a privilege for men to arise and answer to the cause of my pray God will answer I tell you praying there is an anointing that works like perfume Isaac used it and said my son is like a field I place something upon my son that makes him to begin to smell like a field that the Lord has blessed that means you pass and that aura attracts you have you seen people you just like and honestly there is nothing there is no reason you just look at them and you go out of your way to ask questions what are you doing in Zaria I just came do you have a place to stay and you too you are wondering the smell 
when the woman broke the alabaster box the bible says the perfume filled the room there is there is this plant they call queen of the night that's the name i think is that true and once it's night when other plants are sleeping that plant just takes over the entire atmosphere the anointing is smellable you can be within a vicinity and the spirit of someone begins to know ah, this man is here let me go and see this person I say i knew it i knew you were there hold on wait for me and the person will go and bring something i like you to pray the fragrance of your glory lord let it smell my life that as i walk my life becomes a walking miracle going to pray two more prayer points i like you to cry and say lord i am the one who will break the cycle of hardship in my entire lineage there are many of us here listen listen let me tell you the truth you will be a wicked person if you don't think of your children the power of god is here i sense a strong anointing i like you to pray that the grace upon your life will crush hardship once and for all over your family lift your voice and pray lord let the standard be raised of believers that prosper of believers that advance granting them the time to serve the purposes of the kingdom says John was anointed from the womb listen until that time they never named anybody John so they wanted to give him a name an identity like what was the status quo but when the angel came you see that Zechariah wanted to corrupt the destiny of someone who was going to be the greatest of all prophets according to the mouth of the Lord and the, the father's mouth was shut so that the destiny be preserved listen when you do uncommon things uncommon men come to you when you do common things common men come to you you are going to pray lord anoint me for unusual things on 
unusual dimensions unusual ministry unusual business unusual medical practice it has to be unusual no table they said that a notable miracle had happened lift your voice lord an unusual prophet an unusual apostle an unusual evangelist an unusual caterer an unusual chef come on pray an unusual IT consultant an unusual doctor an unusual professor dimensions of the workings of the spirit unusual dimensions unusual dimensions hallelujah listen let me tell you this I shared with you years ago that a man of God was praying for me and that man said something that disturbed me I went to sow a seed to him and he said oh Lord create a problem that only him can solve I, I, I thought that was selfish when you talk of kingdom kingdom is not a thing of competition and the rest but he said he may have prayed his prayer whether I believe it or not it was later as I began to grow that I understood that ah he was not being selfish he was just saying Lord distinguish him put him in a level let me tell you Rehoboth means God has given me my space there is your space in life that you dig a well they can come and close it but there is a space in ministry there is a space in business you're going to pray one prayer lord allocate my space and keep me there a space that is beyond competition beyond contention there are names that when you call on earth there is no basis for comparing them there are names when you call in ministry in business in family life they are outstanding they are in a class of their own your father god is in a class of his own cannot be compared with any other god Listen. I met I just returned from a trip and I met a particular music minister and he came to me and hugged me I said oh I've been blessed by your songs I'm happy to see you now and he looked at me he said apostle this is not the first time you're meeting me I said really he said in 2012 I was in a meeting I was nobody you called me out and prophesied to me and I said I did he said yes that you prophesied to me that the wells of worship the fountain will begin to rise and that from that time his life had moved forward and while we were in the meeting the lord spoke to, me, to him again and i told him i said you are going to write just one song one that will surpass what your songs have done again it doesn't take too many things to lift you just one noise by the hand of god there was one earthquake bang. what did ben carson do to be great just one surgery and that was it when you call all the music ministers in this nation it's usually one song many songs they wrote but one song bishop td jakes wrote one book woman thou art loose till today no other book has brought him that kind of reward dr Miles munro had written so many books bestsellers but when he wrote rediscovering the kingdom 
that one book was a game changer please can we borrow one more minute and say lord what is the one thing that will announce me by your grace let it come let it come let it come lift your voice and pray lord what is the one song lord as a man of god what is the one meeting the one meeting that will announce my grace as a doctor who is the one patient that i will treat and get out of poverty forever one thing is needful one thing one thing pray koinonia there is a god that answers one encounter when he had with jesus changed his life one encounter with catherine kuhlman changed his life one encounter we are still praying lord what is the one thing the one dimension who do i need to prophesy to for my life to change whose body must be healed through my hands what is the one meeting that will announce your grace upon my life what is that one publication that the nations will hear hallelujah praise the lord i think it was last year last year or early this year i had the privilege of flying with professor wale soinka and when i got into the aircraft he was sitting on my seat and i looked at him i was standing face to face with a nobel laureate very simple looking and I thought about this thing again. It's not many things that lift people. They wanted to walk him so that I said, no, 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 you can't do that. This is a great man. I use it as an opportunity to practice the law of honor. Say, please keep him there. Just find whatever seat for me and let me sit. Why will I walk him up? Whereas I aspire that the world hear God's voice through me too. One thing. Have you not seen that great men are only lifted by one thing? If David didn't kill Goliath, he will continue to eat sheep meat till he dies there in the wilderness. The head of Goliath brought him a wife. The head of Goliath made him and his family tax-free. The head of Goliath made him a king. One thing one thing jesus did die on the cross and he resurrected and was enthroned as king listen i know our time is gone but you are going to cry this one thing listen for some of you it may not be one thing it may be one encounter with one person we have a number of our worshipers here this young man gashina where is he he's praying this gentleman it was one of his songs just one of his songs that nathaniel bassi received one of his songs and this song just exploded this gentleman's ministry hallelujah sometimes you just need one encounter i'm saying this to you i've shared with you my experience with jesus it's not that i was not doing i was not doing bad I was already working in a measure of signs and wonders and this but one solid encounter not this nonsense around that people say encounter with no proofs solid encounter where you meet the power of god apostle babalola was roaming around in a forest when fire fell on his head from that forest one encounter and changed his life archbishop benson idahosa it was one encounter that turned his life and announced him bishop oyedeko one encounter an 18 hour vision changed his life papa Ia Deboye, one encounter turned his life around you don't need 10 lord what is the encounter what is the idea what is the song release it cry and say release it call on to me and i will answer one encounter with the healing anointing will take you beyond the shores of this nation 
one encounter with the prophetic grace will open you up to dimension one conference that God will grant you access to rise to will lift you and take you high I stretch my hands and I pray for you in the name of Jesus the fire that must fall on your life to shift you to the next level I stretch my hands receive that fire from heaven now in the name of Jesus Christ I decree and declare where your reward system has become limited may you be upgraded to a higher dimension in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ listen I speak to you if you are in ministry here I stretch my hand I'm telling you it's time for men of fire to arise this lukewarm talkative thing around will continue to mock us we need people that know God and can prove his power and his grace this is what will change the society all this grammar up and down will not do much you need to bring God to the Bible says the word became flesh I speak to you the kind of encounters that must put fire in your spirit may that fire fall on you in the name of Jesus any man of God here any minister of the gospel here and those following online you have been begged at a level of result only certain miracles happen only certain results happen in the name of Jesus enter a new dimension a new dimension in the spirit and I pray for you in the name of Jesus the orchestrations that must make you collide with the doors of the next season of your life we declare by the spirit of wisdom may God coordinate those orchestrations and make them happen for you in the name of Jesus listen for some of you this grace will start waking you up in the night you will be surprised that at specific times sleep will leave you not forever but for a period of time because it is through those prayer times that a solid encounter that's when you will see a real angel for the first time not not lying and saying this and that no daniel was praying after 21 days an angel came there are some of you by reason of that prayer god will lead you to certain bookshops you will see an old book that was written by one general nobody knew you will buy that book and sit down and that's when the fire of your destiny will come upon you value encounters don't trivialize them encounters are, are the things that create conviction this our generation doesn't have conviction at all we just say everything and don't believe it He said that which our eyes have seen that which our ears have heard that which our hands have handled even of the word of life that's what we preach I pray for you encounters with Jesus there are some of you here I speak in the name of Jesus may the king of kings himself visibly walk to your rooms in the name of Jesus may God open you up to these encounters you will start having supernatural encounters encounters with the angelic encounters with the spirits of just men encounters
us with Jesus himself in the name of Jesus Christ For as long as we continue to fool ourselves that our finances are at the mercy of a lot of mundane things, the ease factor is the anointing. The ease factor is the anointing. When all is said and done, please get solid power in your life. Doesn't matter whether you are called into ministry or not. I was in a meeting about a week or so ago and one of the gospel ministers people were ministering and quite honestly I was blessed nothing spectacular but one of the gospel ministers came up and my God for just 10 minutes that gentleman has been a long time long time since I sat down under that corporate that intense presence long time corporately like in a meeting I looked at him I said I know why now I know why this gentleman paid his price when you hold this thing it shows it shows you don't carry the anointing you only carry it so that it will carry you it's the anointing that carries you may God anoint you may God anoint you may God anoint you may god really anoint you and may that anointing speak in your life may it open doors of abundance may that anointing open the hearts of men towards you may it compel men to bring the resources of heaven to you in the name of jesus wave your hands to jesus and give him all the praise blessed be the name of the lord hallelujah just help those under the anointing give me two minutes please you can't sit under this fiery message tonight knowing that you've not handed your life completely to Jesus Christ and then return back like that overflow one overflow two overflow three the roadside and those who are in here someone here is saying apostle I need to make it right with Jesus I love Jesus and I really want to make it right wherever you are there's no coercion I want you to leave your seat don't wait for someone to come I want you to come right here and come and stand and I want you to lead you in prayer as they appreciate you please I like you to clap for them as they come wherever you are someone is coming someone is coming God bless you don't sit back as the Lord is speaking to you that you need to make your ways right if there are people coming from outside please clear the way for them clear the way for them you are saying apostle i need to start a work with the lord that will change my life please run quickly if you are coming god bless you or you are saying apostle i gave my life to christ but i just need to rededicate my life and have that assurance stand up join them very quickly as you come quickly quickly i want to lead them in this prayer now hallelujah god bless you please if you're coming quickly i salute every one of you and thank you for this noble decision you don't frown when you hand over everything to jesus it's the beginning of a remarkable life i want to lead you you're not reciting a poem i like this to be from the depth of your heart say after me lord jesus i love you join them quickly darling and i believe that you are the son of god tonight I hand over my life to you I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness and I declare that I reign in life from today I declare that I'm a child of God I'm born again in the name of Jesus hello scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. 
incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.